Hey, if you're a trucker, never go to Selma, Alabama. That's where I was last night. Stayed at a little truck stop last night. Got up this morning and guess what? They stole my spare tire on Old Red's maiden voyage with her brand new engine. They broke in. Uh, they didn't break in, but they cut the chain and stole the the my spare tire and that wasn't a retread that was a real tire so i'm not ever going to stop in selma alabama again i talked to the manager and he said they had to close their truck stop at nights there because every night they kept it open they were robbed every single night so there's no place open in selma alabama i blame this on electronic logs why? Because I knew Selma isn't a good place to stop, but I was out of hours. I could have stayed in Montgomery, which isn't that much better, but anyway, what a downer. But I'm not going to let it bother me. I'll just have to go get another spare tire. So let's get on with our trip to Temple, Texas. <laughs> Let's get out of this little uh, paper mill here. And look for a place to fill up our coffee. Yes, even somebody that has no spare tire needs a cup of coffee. In fact, that will even help soothe the pain. If I were an alcoholic, I guess I'd be asking for a drink. And we have a light load on this, uh, what we're hauling right now. Only 14,000, so we ought to be getting some good fuel mileage. I really need it. I'm going to be sharing some of these things as I go about what happened to my truck and stuff. And this is just one of the things. The engine was completely rebuilt. I have a brand new, not a brand new engine, but a, a new engine that was rebuilt. And along with that, six new injectors because why open up the engine and not get injectors so I got injectors too ever since that I, old, um, old Red used to be a 6.5 truck and now she's a 5.5 truck in one quarter mile, turn right on AL. That's a lot of money. And that makes me raise my eyebrows. Feet. Now, everybody says, well, the engine will break in. And I've driven her 5,000 miles. I don't know how long it takes to break turn in. Turn right on AL 156 and then turn left at 550 feet. But I sure hope. I hope I can get her up to six, at least. And by the way, you can follow my fuel mileage at Kevin Rutherford's Let's Truck site for fuel. It's called Fuel Gauges, and you can see if I'm uh, accurate in what I tell you or not. It shows my truck there every single fill up since I've had old red and uh, you'll see how it's gone like that gone way down if you want to track me on there if you're on there also at letstruck.com I'm Indy Jack Volvo I-N-D-Y Jack Volvo and you can see me there so let's get on to Texas.
You're watching Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. Stay tuned. We're in Tumsuba, Mississippi. This has always been a fuel stop for us. you'll be able to see it but this truck to the right it was parked there and I think a guy tried to pull around the corner and took off his whole hood so the moral to that story is never parked there see I came pretty close to it and I went way wide. That's a dumb place to park. We got a copper on our tail. Sheriff. They don't like to deal with trucks. Doesn't mean he wouldn't. My nephew is a sheriff. <laughs> he doesn't know wouldn't know what to do with the truck, he's told me that. Wow, 
that truck totally turned over. Looks like a Swift. So sure enough, that guy, once he said that, that mechanic said that at Cummins in Phoenix, I knew I had the right shop. Because he said it's known in the Cummins world anyway, if coolant is going in that little overflow, that you got coolant going in your engine. So, man, that, I, I felt confident after that point. I'll keep telling you stories as we go about what happened to Old Red as she was re rebuilt. Well, I made it all the way to Tyler, Texas. I have another uh, couple hours to go in the morning, so we'll be there first thing in the morning. It's been a good trip. I only did like 515 miles though. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Waco, Texas. We're at the Flying J where everybody else is also. And it's quite a crowded truck stop. This has always been a crowded truck stop, the Flying J here. Everybody stops here that's a trucker. Rightfully so. I like this Flying J. It's a good place to stop. And we're on our way down just up uh, 30 miles down to Temple, Texas. We got some nice hot coffee and an apple. the day out, right? memories of this Flying J. In 2007, I watched the uh, Super Bowl here. I was a trainer then, and I had a trainee. And, boy, was it packed. It, that, that TV room in there was just jam-packed full of drivers. I would venture to say that truck stops could double their size. And in the nighttime, now that we all have to stop at night, they would be full. I've heard some guys make some really good suggestions, like in some cities, at nighttime, malls would become truck stops or stadiums. That's actually a good idea, in my opinion. Turn right on, I-35 South. It'd be hard to coordinate all that. Since most Walmarts are banning us from parking there, those are becoming less and less an option. That is our fault, the truck driver's fault. Because of the 
condition that we're leaving the parking lots in. rather do a five hour unload than to have to search Texas for an empty. Because that costs me money, whereas sitting here getting unloaded doesn't cost me any money. It does, because I don't have a, not moving, but. All right, let's get our paperwork in order and we'll go up there and tell them we're here. Temple, Texas. Well, here's the good news. They're going to be unloading me in a few minutes. The bad news is it's a live unload. But it's not one of those live unloads in the middle of the night, so it's not so bad. And I don't have to pay any money. That's even better. Well, it took them two hours and nine minutes. As you can see, the sun went down a little bit. That's not bad. I can live with two hours and nine minutes to unload my truck. Not six hours, but two hours. That's acceptable for me. So let's see if we can go find a place to park. Now that's gonna be the issue here in Temple, Texas.